Can technology minimize the risk in diabetics during Ramadan fasting? I am Professor Hazim El Ashmawi, Professor of Endocrinology and Diabetes, Faculty of Medicine, member of the Arabic Association for the Study of Diabetes and Metabolism. As we know, Ramadan is the ninth month of the Muslim calendar, and the daylight fasting that accompanies it is one of the five pillars of Islam. Uh, we know fasting during Ramadan is compulsory for all healthy adult Muslims, although exceptions exist for people with serious medical conditions, including many with diabetes. Nevertheless, the majority of individuals with diabetes see the fast as deeply meaningful and spiritual experience, and most will participate, participate sometimes against medical advice. So, embarrassing and utilizing advances in technology may be one way to improve accessibility to information about the management of diabetes during Ramadan and another way to decrease the risk that may accompany fasting during Ramadan. So, when we talk about risks associated with fasting in patient, uh, with diabetes. So, in keeping with this, um, a large epidemiological study conducted in 13 Islamic countries on 2,243 uh, diabetic individuals who fasted during Ramadan showed a high rate of acute complications. However, a few study on this topic use, uh, using relatively small groups of patients suggest that complication rate may be not uh, be significantly increased to that extent. So, what is the risks during fasting and how we can use technology to decrease such risks? So, the first risk that the patient during fasting can be exposed to is hypoglycemia. The effect of fasting during Ramadan on rates of hypoglycemia in patients with diabetes is not known with certainty. The larger data set is a recent EBITDA study, which shows that the fasting during Ramadan increased the risk of severe hypoglycemia, which is defined as hospitalization due to hypoglycemia some 4.7 fold in patients with type 1 diabetes from 3 to 14 even, and 7.5 fold in patients with type 2 diabetes from 0 0.4 to 3 even. So the incidence of severe hypoglycemia was probably underestimated in this study because even requiring assistance from the third party without the need for hospitalization were not included. Also, severe hypoglycemia was more frequent in patients in whom the dosage of oral hypoglycemic agents or insulin were changed and in those who reported a significant change in their lifestyle. As we see here, the hypoglycemic symptoms that patients may suffer during the attack of hypoglycemia. Um, and the patient must be aware for such symptoms. So the second complication or second risk that um, fasting patient can be exposed to is hyperglycemia. Hyperglycemia um, the extensive EBITDA study showed a five-fold increase in the incidence of severe hyperglycemia, really, which means requiring hospitalization, of course, and during Ramadan in patients with type 2 diabetes, from one to five events, and an approximate three-fold increase in the incidence of severe hyperglycemia with or without ketosis in patients with type 1 diabetes, from 5 to 17 Fault, from 5 to 7 events. So hyperglycemia may have been due to excessive reduction in the dosage of medication to prevent hypoglycemia, or patients who reported an increase in food and or sugar intake had significantly higher rate of severe hyperglycemia. So all this is get all this um, uh, symptoms. The patient also must be aware. Uh, that is, uh, is uh, hyperglycemic symptoms um, and during the fasting and he must stop fasting if he feels such symptoms. 
So another complication that may accompany uh, the hyperglycemia is diabetic ketosis. So patients with diabetes, especially those with type 1 diabetes, who fast during Ramadan are at increased risk of development of diabetic ketosis, particularly if their diabetes is poorly controlled before Ramadan. In addition, the risk of diabetic ketosis may be further increased due to excessive reduction of insulin dosage based on assumptions that food intake is reduced during the month. Also, uh, the patient can suffer from dehydration and thrombosis. So, limitation of fluid intake during the fast, especially if prolonged, is the cause of dehydration. In addition, hyperglycemia produces an osmotic diuresis, further contributing to volume and electrolyte depletion. Orthostatic hypotension may develop especially in patients with pre-existing autonomic neuropathy. In addition, uh, to contraction of the intravascular space can further exacerbate the hypercoagulable state that is well demonstrated in diabetes. So, the use of technology to improve diabetes management during Ramadan. Technology can be a useful tool for improving diabetes management for example, service can adapt a reminder system to remind the health care providers to provide Ramadan fasting advice to each patient in their pre-Ramadan pre -Ramadan consultation. And now, owing a mobile phone is commonplace these days. Therefore, mobile messaging and applications could be used to improve disease awareness and to provide support for diabetes self-management, including medications, reminders, diet and lifestyle plans. So now we'll talk about the M Diabetes Project, which is one of the ways of using technology to minimize the risk of complications for diabetic patients during Ramadan. Passing and utilizing advances in technology may be one way to improve accessibility to information about the management of diabetes during Ramadan, especially for people in remote regions. And the M Diabetes Project is one of such initiative. Diabetes and Ramadan related information is sent in text messages to enrolled individuals, which uh, happened before in Senegal. And the aim of the uh, the aim of the aim of these text messages was to increase awareness of diabetes and provide advice during Ramadan to prevent complications associated with fasting and feasting. In 2014, around 3,000 people had registered to receive the message, and this increased to 11,000 in 2015. Since its launch in 2014, there has been a rapid rise in people registering to receive such information. And 100% of participants surveyed had requested to receive messages for the next Ramadan. This could prove to be an effective way for publicizing and circulating up-to-date guidelines to a wider population. So, patients with diabetes, uh, healthcare providers and the, gen the general public were encouraged to sign up to receive a special set of diabetes and Ramadan SMS before, during and even after Ramadan. During the evaluation, a random sample of about 100 patients with diabetes who had registered for the SMS service were interviewed by phone. And the outcome was very positive, confirming the high interest within the diabetes community to receive simple daily advice on a personal device to help manage their diabetes during Ramadan and fast, and fast safely. The MDBs project has also been launched in Egypt. The WHO regional office in Cairo has announced, in Cairo announced in February 2016 the MDBs program. And this was in collaboration with the International Telecommunication Union, Egypt's Ministry of Health, and also Ministry of Higher Education. SMS education is a feasible and acceptable method for improving glycemic control and self management uh, behavior among Egyptian diabetics. So the M diabetes is an efficient tool for reducing unequal excessive care to care due 
to financial or geographic or social reasons. So to this end, the World Health Organization and the International Union of Telecommunication have implemented the P Healthy P Mobile initiative, which seeks the, to use mobile technology to fight the growing global burden of non-communicable disease, including diabetes. Now we'll talk about types of diabetes technology that can be used to minimize the risk um, of fasting in people with diabetes. So we have that uh, there are three broad themes of, to diabetes technology. Technology for checking um, blood sugars and also technology for taking insulin and technology to help managing diabetes like carb counting applications and ketone monitors. So we'll start first with the technology for checking blood sugar. Self-monitoring of blood glucose. So self-monitoring blood glucose forms the cornerstone for the management of diabetes both during and also outside of fasting. Another commonly held method that make people minimize the self-monitoring blood glucose checks is that they may have to break their fast on finding out about their hypoglycemic episodes if they were to check frequently. In fact, frequent uh, self-monitoring blood glucose may reduce the frequency and severity of hypoglycemic episodes so that fasting can be performed safely during Ramadan. Type 1 and type 2 diabetes treated with insulin. For insulin treated subjects, self monitoring blood glucose more or equal to 3 times daily have been associated with improved glycemic control outside of fasting in both types of diabetes, either type 1 or type 2. Also, fasting during Ramadan is, to, is associated with an increased risk of severe hypoglycemia, hypoglycemic episodes in individuals with both types of diabetes, while hyperglycemic episodes are increased, particularly in those with type 1 diabetes. So evidence that employing self-monitoring blood glucose improves the glycemic control during Ramadan is derived principally from the observational studies that examine it as a part of the effective effectiveness of the diabetes education program, making it difficult to determine whether the fact observed where and where the results of frequent self-monitoring blood glucose or other aspects of the problem. In a small uh, co cohort of about um, 21 subjects with both type 1 and type 2 diabetes, using the basal bolus insulin regimen, a diabetes education program including self-monitoring blood glucose more than 5 times per day was associated with a reduction in hypoglycemic episodes during Ramadan. Another prospective study which assessed twice daily self monitoring blood glucose among subjects with type 1 or type 2 diabetes, 67% taking insulin showed a reduction in hypoglycemic episodes during Ramadan. Although limited by study methodology, these reports provide the only available evidence associating frequent self monitoring blood glucose with a reduction in hypoglycemic episodes in individuals with diabetes who were fasting during Ramadan. However, as mentioned above, the insulin dosage adjustment to optimize care and to prevent and detect hypoglycemia indicates the need for regular self-monitoring blood glucose. What about type 2 diabetes treated with non-insulin regimen? So similar methodologic limitations exist in studies examining the effect of self-monitoring blood glucose in diabetes treated with non-insulin medications during Ramadan. In a prospective study, participants in an education program that included self-monitoring blood glucose twice daily experienced a decrease in body mass index, hemoglobin one c and severe hypoglycemic episodes during Ramadan. Similarly, weight loss and the decrease in the number of hypoglycemic episodes was observed in retrospective study, in which participants in a diabetes education program were advised to test glucose when symptomatic while fasting. But neither study, however, listed the daily self monitoring blood glucose frequency in the control group. 
So this is the glucometer. All we know is a glucometer which can be used by the diabetic patient during an evening without fasting to check their blood glucose. It is an old invention. It's about from 1980s for direct measurement of blood glucose. It needs a very small sample to check blood glucose level. Continuous anti flash glucose monitoring. There is misconception by some patient, Muslim patient during Ramadan fasting, that breaking the skin for blood glucose testing invalidates the Ramadan fast, which is not true. Continuous glucose monitoring and flash glucose monitoring by individual with either type 1 or type 2 diabetes and flash glucose monitoring by those with type 1 especially have not identified a worsening of glycemic control during Ramadan. No, no study to date has compared the utility of continuous glucose monitoring or flash glucose monitoring versus self-monitoring blood glucose in improving glycemic control when fasting during Ramadan. So further studies are needed to assess the utility of continuous or flash glucose monitoring in individuals with diabetes who fast during Ramadan, particularly among those using complex insulin regimen. So this is the continuous glucose monitoring technology and this is the sensor as we see here the sensor is um, composed from several layers either in the, from the electrode uh, from enzyme and um, uh, glucose oxidase converting uh, to convert the glucose to hydrogen uh, peroxide and this is the uh, semi permeable membrane to check in the um, blood glucose continuously. So continuous glucose monitoring estimates blood glucose by measuring the concentration of glucose in interstitial fluid, not in blood, in interstitial fluid. So signals from interstitial fluid are calibrated to the finger stick blood glucose level. We make calibration to be sure for the accuracy of testing blood glucose. But there is delay between blood glucose and continuous glucose monitoring. This delay comes from the lag between interstitial fluid and blood glucose plus electrochemical sensor delay. An example for the continuous blood glucose monitoring is the Doxcom devices. Doxcom devices is um, one of the famous devices for uh, checking uh, blood glucose continuously by the technology of continuous blood glucose uh, measurement and the installation of the device really is, is very simple. Uh, for the patient and uh, as we see there is mm, no finger stick elimination no finger stick are needed for the calibration of diabetes uh, or diabetes treatment decision also as we see it is um, there is easy sensor applicator complete um, red sign of the sensor applicator allow for one touch and simple insertion also there is um, the all devices for the continuous glucose monitoring the, and the blood glucose is affected by the acetaminophen. So the, this now new device is now has a um, new feature allows for the more accurate blood glucose reading with no medication interface. Also uh, no medication interference. So uh, also there is predictive low alert. The new alert features predict hypoglycemia before it hit to help avoid dangerous low blood glucose sugars in fasting patients. Also, this sensor has extended 10 days. 10 days sensor allow for 43% longer wear than previous generation from the Doxcom continuous glucose monitoring device. Also, we have here the uh, freestyle library. Freestyle library is another way for checking blood glucose, very simple, even without breaking the skin. And this was approved in, pro approved in US as a glucose, uh, continuous glucose monitoring standard in Europe. It's used um, for 14 days, factory calibrated, no need for calibration, for 10, 10 days use in the US with 12 hour warming up to start function, of course. And touch screen reader and real time glucose value, continuous glucose monitoring on demand, capture and store a reading. As we see here, it is very simple and patient can check blood glucose as much as he wants. In any time he feels symptoms or even want to um, just checking blood glucose 
to uh, know that he's in the safe zone, he can check it very easily. Even during uh, during iftar or during suhoor or during the uh, during work, at any time the patient can check blood glucose without finger prick or without um, uh, without any stress on the patient. But the difference here, we have to know the difference between the continuous glucose monitoring and the freestyle library. Freestyle library will give you, yes, continuous reading, many readings through the day. But there is no alarm. Yeah, continuous glucose monitoring can give you alarm during hypoglycemia, alarm during hyperglycemia. But freestyle library, it depends, about, uh, it depends on um, which time you will check the blood glucose. You may have hyperglycemia, but you don't make any uh, check now. So uh, the difference that uh, the continuous glucose monitoring can also uh, uh, always monitoring you, monitoring your blood glucose at any time of the day to give you alert in hypo and hyperglycemic. But freestyle library is very simple. Yes, it's very simple. It can give you frequent reading, but when you decide to take the reading. Another technology really it's what's called glucotrack and this is a um, glucotrack without needle at all you know that in continuous glucose monitoring we uh, put the needle once every 14 days or in uh, free uh, style delivery once insertion every 10 days but in glucotrack it is no needle insertion at all this glucose monitoring technology without needles so Glucotrack use a unique and patent combination of the three different technologies, ultrasound, electromagnetic, and thermal, brought together with property algorithm to weight each measurement and calculate weighted average of the three reading. Once calibrated, taking a reading is as simple as clipping the personal ear clip to the wearer ear loop to obtain a reading. The reading takes under one minute to complete, but maybe the drawback that this device is really expensive. So now we will shift to technology of taking insulin. Technology of taking insulin, and now the technology is the insulin pump. This is a very uh, good technology for taking insulin in fasting patients during Ramadan. An insulin pump provides continuous insulin delivery over 24 hours with basal infusion rates programmed and individualized for each patient. Patient self administers pulses of insulin with meals and at time of hyperglycemia, often with mathematical support from the pump. So, theoretically, the combined risks of hypoglycemia from prolonged daytime, daytime fasting and hyperglycemia from excessive nighttime eating can be better managed by an insulin pump based regimen than multiple insulin doses uh, injection therapy. Hypoglycemia, uh, of course, can be aborted, reduced, prevented, and even more readily treated with pump um, uh, treated uh, patients by, sim by timely downward adjustment or even stopping insulin delivery from the pump. Such an advantage is not available for to those treated with conventional insulin injection, of course, in which insulin continuous to be released from the site of injection throughout its predetermined deterioration of action. So any excess, insu any excess insulin action can only be counteracted, in by in uh, counteracted by intake of carbohydrate. So uh, this is the difference between taking insulin by injection and by taking insulin through insulin bump. So fasting at Ramadan may be successfully accomplished in people with type 1 diabetes if they are fully educated and settle with the use of insulin pump and are otherwise metabolically stable and free from any acute illnesses. So before Ramadan, prior to Ramadan, they should receive adequate training and education to use such pump, particularly with the respect to self-management and insulin dose adjustment. They should adjust their infusion rate carefully according to the results of the frequent home glucose monitoring. So this is a combination between the technology of using frequent home glucose monitoring and the technology of insulin pump to get better, result, uh, better results in minimizing the risk in such patients. Most will need to reduce their better, insulin, better infusion rate 
while they, while increasing the bolus doses to cover the pre down and sunset meal. So another technology for taking insulin is the smart insulin bin. Smart insulin bin is another or other major recent developments including approval of, of insulin smart pen injector pen that record the amount and timing of insulin dose with data shared with mobile application at the same time so as we see here the patient uses smart pen he can avoid uh, hypoglycemia and hyperglycemia and also the forgetness if the patient forget if he take the insulin dose or not to avoid lack of insulin dose or doubling the dose and this is very important in, in, in very important uh, that can be avoided by smart insulin pen so as we, as we said the, the data shared with mobile phone, mobile application to track trends and make those recommendations smart pen like any other pen in the injector the difference is smart pen track each dose and deliver the data to a secure application on the patient's smartphone Finally, no complicated math and no logbook to update for the patient. And this is a really very good advantage uh, that can really, really help to minimize the risk um, uh, of fasting uh, during um, Ramadan for a diabetic patient. And this is another technology that helps managing diabetes, the technology for managing diabetes in patients during fasting. There are other types of technologies that can help patients to manage their diabetes like ketone monitors which measure the amount of ketones in the blood. Ketone monitors are recommended for people who use insulin pumps but others may benefit from them too. As you see here, this is the mobile applications that can be used in such patients to uh, help them to uh, manage their blood glucose and this is an application called diabetes or M diabetes. There are a lot of applications and small technology that can help patients with managing their card counting in Ramadan. And bowl of calculation, food database, and lookbook for the patient, all these benefits even give charts and graphs for their uh, blood glucose throughout the whole month. Ketone monitors, as we see here in this video, this is a ketone monitoring device. So, um, uh, GlucoRx and uh, ketone blood glucose meter is a unique multi parameter machine with hematocrit correction technology also that provides a complete health check by measuring blood glucose, hematocrit, ketones, and even hemoglobin. Uh, Glucomin Plus, this is another. Glucomin Plus is a blood glucose meter that incorporates two in one blood glucose and ketone testing facility in the same time. And this patient can check both uh, blood glucose and even blood glucose, uh, blood, blood ketones, not urine ketones. He can check the blood ketones also. One of the application uh, that use technology to uh, control diabetes. It's a diabetes tracker for Android phone and tablet. It's called uh, My Net Diary. Uh, you can find it easily on uh, Play Store, and it is a comprehensive tracker application for, for Android and help fasting patients to track and manage their diabetes, to keep track uh, of blood glucose and control carbs. Its uh, average self-reported A1C reduction is about 1.4%. So it tracks carbs and other nutrients, and also it has a huge food database. About over has over than eight point eight hundred five thousand verified food in its database. So uh, this application, my net diary can calculate net carbs and diabetes carb count and let the patient select them as the main carb type. It can give uh, diabetes report. Diabetes report provides easy and powerful report help fasting patient to see everything together. He, he can see foods, uh, carbs, insulin, blood glucose and medication all together as you see. 
in such diabetes reports. Also, it has a barcode scanner. This barcode scanner for fast food entry. It can be used for every barcode in, in, in the package of any food. He bring it from the market. There is a barcode scanner. With this program, he can check the barcode scanner to give all the information about such food. As we see here in the video, the patient can uh, see everything about the straw, uh, straw, uh, strawberry banana. How much will cost, uh, how the amount of, um, uh, how many carbs, how many calories inside, everything with that barcode scanner. This is for fast food entry and provide built in barcode scanner in the application. About what is the recommendation for patient uh, patient with diabetes uh, during Ramadan fasting? First, uh, he he must use the technology as much as he can, because every te every technology added he, he is equal to lesser risk during fasting. So, for individual fasting during Ramadan, who use insulin? So first, education on the frequency of self-monitoring blood glucose testing during fasting should be provided to improve hemoglobin A1C levels and reduce the rate of hypoglycemia. In the short term, real-time glucose, uh, continuous glucose monitoring or flash glucose monitoring during fasting to adjust insulin doses and prevent hypoglycemia risk may be considered for people living with type 1 or type 2 diabetes who are taking complex insulin regimen defined as basal bolus at least one additional administration of bolus insulin. For individuals with diabetes who don't require insulin, if the cell monitoring blood glucose should be individualized according to the type of therapy, the risk of hypoglycemia or hyperglycemia and the level of glycemic control and duration of fast. So as we say in addition to this recommendation, so using of technology that we mentioned before in, in, as much as the patient can can really help them but the patient need to be educated for such in, uh, uh, technology prior to, uh, to Ramadan so pre-Ramadan education is very important even in using the technology that can help him during Ramadan fasting thank you